every year is different. Uh, it certainly is. Mr. Chairman, members of the Finance Committee, County Manager, uh, happy to be here. Um, I've listened to enough of these tonight to know really that it started at the back with the budget. Um, generally works best. And unfortunately, uh, unlike my predecessors, you're going to see some increases in certain areas that I'm requesting um, due to the fact that uh, federal and state aid has been reduced costs keep going up and the need unfortunately for these types of services which are what I would call safety net services for the county to provide things like paratransit um, which are essential for people to move around the county. Um, the money is just not there through casino revenue and otherwise that they've been in previous years um, and obviously it affects the quality of life for individuals that need us to get around the county. So uh, I can do um, this any way you would like um, but if we can start where you are well, why don't you just, why don't you start, like I said, at the back, the comparison between the 12 and 13 okay. serves so we can serve and go. Yeah. Well, starting with this, paid, you know. starting with that slide that you have before you, uh, the director's office, which is my office, there, there are um, services that are in there, uh, detention center, uh, paratransit, the children's shelter, uh, that come out of that office and have those line items. You'll see, or you do see, that in that line item, there is a request for an increase of approximately $449,000 from 12 to 13. That the reason for that um, <clears throat> for that request is as follows: um, we uh, we have a uh, we pay rent for 921 Elizabeth Avenue out of there which is the one stop in Elizabeth. While we need to reimburse for that, it comes directly out of that budget. There is an, you know, there's an increase in that as there are most leases on a year-to-year basis. Uh, we have $400,000 that comes out of that for the community access shelter, which is a mandated shelter that we have to provide for kids uh, that are incorrigible, truant, and runaway. As you know, years ago, we, we moved that from a direct service program into a contract service. You know, to this day, we're still saving money because we're not using paid staff, county staff to do it. But those costs continue to, be, to, to go up. And again, this is a, count, this is a state mandate that the county has to pay 100% for. Uh, even though we are averaging about four to five kids, um, it is a costly service uh, to keep. So we have no choice but to do that. Um, paratransit, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, um, there is a... Uh, $2,900,000 gap uh, that we're going to need as part of this overall piece to, to increase because of uh, um, dwindling casino revenue. Uh, we did increase the fare. Uh, if you recall, we put a fare in effect a few years back. It was a dollar. Uh, and we increased it with the board policy up to two. Uh, that's netted us about $88,000 annually. Uh, we've been very um, uh, patient with uh, individuals that have not paid. Um, uh, we, we continue to allow them to ride, but we're <coughs> now of uh, sending letters out because people are in arrears and buy a lot of money. Um, so we're trying to catch up with them now. But of course, you know, the last thing we want to do is to deny someone who really needs a ride, particularly if they're going to a chemotherapy appointment. You know, medical, you know, whatever medical appointment they need, we're very reluctant to, to take them off. But, you know, at some point we have to, since there is a policy in effect, bless you, but there's a policy in effect, we've got to be able to, uh, to enforce that policy. Uh, but as of today, we've still not denied anyone alive. Um, the, um, the, just, just quickly, uh, you know, the service again, it provide, provided last year over 214,600 one-way rides. So we just compare transit, so that service is definitely you know, well used within the county and outside of the county. As you know, years ago with managed care kicking in, our trips are longer, um, and there's not as many people on them as it used to be when you had Muhlenberg, when you had a Union Hospital, and those hospitals where people used to go in order to get chemotherapy or medical appointments, now because they're not there any law, longer, they're going to JFK, they're going to farther out, which basically, you know, we need to take them, 
there's not as many people that go at the same time. So if you're stretching your rides and you're not getting the bang for your buck because you're not filling those vans. But it's on hand. Um, uh, this is the first time this year we also were able to get a contract with a uh, nonprofit to do transportation, a Y. It passed us, I think, about two months ago. That's netting us about $15,000 annually. It's the first contract that we've had with someone to provide a service for. We're going to continue to do that and be aggressive. But the bottom line, I think no matter how aggressive we are, unless the casino revenue improves for us and the state ups that, we're going to continue to have to come back to the county um, to try to keep the same levels of service that we've had in order to provide service for individuals that we need. Frank, can you speak to the 379 increase in overtime? The 379 increase in overtime is in the juvenile detention center. Uh, I'm not, since, since my, uh, the jail director did such a great job, trust me, I'm not happy about what, what I'm going to be telling you, but there, there are reasons for this, and let me tell you what they are. Is, is, that, is that number all? Is that 379 as it relates to the juvenile detention? That is, yes. No, that's the juvenile detention. That's, that's the increase. Um, I will tell you this. The, the increase uh, last year in, 2000, uh, in 2012, over $251,000 on overtime was spent for OJIs and work, and work without pay. Uh, there has been, there was an inordinate amount of officers injured last year. Uh, while the population has not uh, increased dramatically for us, although I will tell you that right now we're holding on an average of about 50 to 52 county kids a day, which is up for us. They, they, we've been in the 30s and 40s for many years, particularly since we moved from the parking garage here over into our new facility in Linden. Um, our population had remained fairly stable in the middle 30s, sometimes hit 40. Nothing like I know that Angel and Dan in particular would remember years ago when we were hovering at 80 over at the old detention center. So, uh, you know, all of the, the things that we put in place after we moved have worked for us, similar to what Brian has done with his luminosity study. We did that with the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative many years ago, which really saw a drop in our local juvenile population, which allowed us when we moved from that parking deck into Linden to aggressively go after contracts with not only the federal government, which we still have, uh, but also, as you know, we've had a uh, contract with Bergen County up until recently when they opened a new facility. We are in negotiation right now with uh, uh, Ocean County. They are looking to close their facility. They're looking at Middlesex, but Middlesex is only allowed to take three kids uh, in their population, which means that they have to have another facility online, which would be us. Also, Bergen, which just opened, they are negotiating to take over Morris's population. Morris is looking to close. We're looking to at least back up them. So we're, even though we lost Bergen, we're looking to get develop two more contracts this year in order to, you know, I'm not sure it's going to make up the difference for us, but it will help down the line. The overtime, um, again, about 251,000 of that in terms of last year was due to the fact that they were in an ordinate amount of OJIs, on the job injuries. Kids are rougher, um, and as a result of that, there's been um, more one-on-ones with the kids to try to restrain them and the officers get injured. Uh, in addition to that, I am still spending to this day approximately $70,000 annually to hold kids in court um, when we have to bring them down from Lincoln. You'll recall uh, from my previous budget presentations, uh, there was what I believe to be a handshake agreement with the Sheriff's Department um, at that time to take over that as it's done as protocol with all court. When we, when we bring them in, Sheriff takes them over and manages through the court process and then releases them back into custody of either a correction officer or a juvenile detention officer. Uh, when we closed the old detention center, uh, to do the renovations where we were holding kids when we brought them down. Uh, we created cells in back of family court. Um, and I, uh, I thought at that point that the sheriff would take them over, but they have not. Uh, which is, we're still talking to them about it, but what happens is right now, my JDOs, juvenile detention officers, will do a transport from Linden for court appearances. They will bring them into family court. In back of family court are, are cells that have been constructed 
and approved by the juvenile uh, the uh, uh, juvenile conference uh, committees uh, to hold these kids, but my offices have to stay through the court appearances and then bring them back. So the 70,000 of that over time is for at least one and a half posts that I'm using each and every day um, while we're down here. Um, we do get reimbursement. Uh, some of this overtime is reimbursed because of the federal government. These also include the federal kids. Uh, so approximately 70,000 of that cost is reimbursed, uh, comes back to the county um, um, as a result of holding them as part of our overall federal contract. For the board members that may not know, we've had a federal contract uh, with uh, the Department of Health and Human Services Federal for I think it's five years now. What, what it does is we are holding kids that are picked up um, in the United States anywhere uh, for a crime that would normally put them in detention, but as a result of running a background on them, find out that they're undocumented. So they have come into the country from whatever means available, um, usually crossing borders, and have been picked up, may have lived here for years, and we are the only facility in the state of New Jersey that operates a program like this for the federal government. They guarantee, we guarantee them 10 beds uh, um, a day, uh, and whether they use those beds or not, they pay us for those. Um, most of those kids are the attempt by the federal government because we're so close to federal court. Um, it's a transport back and forth to go to the federal piece. Most of it, they try to keep the kids back in the United, in the United States if there's a, you know, a family relative or someone that will pay them. Assume custody of them while they're here. If not, they are deported. But we've had that contract for five years, um, and again, it's, it's it's provided additional revenue for us in order to cover some of our costs. Uh, again, detention is a mandated service. You have to provide it, or you have to have a mechanism to provide it. You don't have to provide it directly as a county. If you don't, you can share your service, but you still have to pay the cost to whatever county is doing. So. Um, the other thing, the last part of the overtime, is because we have been able to stabilize our population for the years that we've been in Linden, we're, 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 we have enough staff to cover between 50 and 55 kids. When it gets over that, then for security reasons, we will bring in additional staff members uh, in order to cover that to make sure that we're properly providing security and custody. Um, and that's part of that overall cost. Obviously, I'm not pleased with the fact that we've, we went that high. Uh, we'll do everything we can to, to, to reduce it. Uh, but again, the biggest problem that we're having is the kids are tougher, they engage quicker, and when officers engage with them, they get injured. I can keep going if you'd like. Uh, you got about 10 more minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, the other, uh, there's, a, there's a couple other, in, well, let me see more. Okay. You'll notice aging, there's a decrease. Uh, there's a decrease in the overall budget. If you flip to, if you flip to use services, um, there's a decrease. Um, planning, there's a decrease. Um, social services. The overall budget for social services um, is requested an increase from 12 to 13, uh, approximately 1 million 365. Majority, I mean, I'm looking at the majority of that is salary. The, the majority of that, the majority of that increase is is contractual obligation CWA. Um, um, part of it, there is also two positions that we've asked for in, the, in that in this budget that's included in, in this price. It's an assistant administrator. Uh, the reason why we're requesting an assistant administrator, uh, it's, it's in our family programs, our, our family care and our other insurance programs between, two, between 2011 and 2012. The, the number of apps that we've taken has increased by 50%. Uh, what it shows is obviously uh, unemployment is still there. There's a lot of people without insurance. Uh, a lot of people now are coming to see if they qualify for family care and the other types of insurance provided under social services. We have to take an application on every person that comes in. 
whether or not we know they're eligible or not. Um, it's a requirement. These are time-consuming applications. And if any of you have been by Westminster Avenue as an example, you will see lines out the door. Um, and part of that is because of the increase in the need for services. We have hoped to remedy that. We've recently moved from uh, uh, where we were with our law office on Prince Street into larger, a larger building on Parker Road, which we have decided to move not only uh, child support uh, fraud, but also the immunization clinic that was down there and move them out so we can have more room in our waiting area so that we don't have to have people waiting out we can create a larger waiting area. Because we do believe that those roles are not going to de decrease, they're going to continue to increase, and so we have to accommodate people uh, in a humane way, and that way is not to keep them outside and all the way away from services. Um, so, so part of that one that, that one million and three is, is that um, the uh, Parker Road has increased uh, our cost over what we were paying for when we were just in Prince Street, but the additional square footage allows us now to do some things that we just were not able to do in the space that we had. We literally have outgrown, for all intents and purposes, Westminster Avenue where we've been for years. Uh, so the only way to fix that is either find a larger building or to start breaking up programs and putting them in different buildings. And that, as you know, the, the, the approximate cost, you know, the county has to uh, budget 100% of the cost for social services, and we then get a reimbursement based on, based on what we submit, um, and to the tune of around roughly 50% of the total cost. So while you'll see this, you'll see a re you won't see it, but I didn't see it either. It comes in somewhere in the county, but uh, there is a reimbursement on these costs. Yeah, it's a kind of little somewhere 100%. Question? Maybe you can just speak to the casino revenue itself. What, what is it? I, I know it's been down every, every year. Let's say what it is. Or, or do we have a projection what it is in 2013? Or is that well, we're, not, we're projecting that, that the, the revenues could remain stagnant. I mean, we're not, we are not projecting at this point based on what we know. We're not, project, we're not projecting an increase in that revenue. Obviously, the casino revenue specifically, you know, when the casinos were put in, uh, the <coughs> legislation put in that specifically provides for services for people with disabilities and seniors. And that has been the, that has been the, um, the major, the major funding source for us since, since I've been here many, many years. Really? Since, since, uh, yeah, since the casinos started. Were, uh, exactly. Uh, 30 and, years or 30 years. And, and unfortunately, um, depending on how you want to look at it, I mean, as you know, the casinos have suffered. I mean, a lot of them are really suffering. As a result, people are gambling and the revenue's not there. And as a result of the revenue's not there, then it's not coming to the counties. And all counties are having the same problems um, as we're having. Um, and, and the problem is that the county then has to look to make up some of the difference. Say, do we have a number? Where, where, what that gap is, or where the county, where we've supplemented that with the county dollars as opposed to those casino dollars. I mean, if you don't have it now, we can. We have it. We have I'm sure it's in the millions of dollars. We don't have a breakout for the casino revenue. It just comes in as one month in the earned income rate. But, but we do have, I mean, I've gotten the contract. I'm the little, I, I, I don't have a good contract. Right, you know, over the next couple of weeks, yeah. it would just be interesting. I mean, again, I, what, what I'm trying to demonstrate is county has to supplement where the funding was here and the funding continues to drop and, and for, the, for the services to remain at the same level, those are county dollars now that are coming in. You know, when we look at deficits and various things, and the only other choice we have in that particular case is to fund the service to match the, the dollars, which, as you said, you're, you have more than 200,000 bribes. It's one way. One, one way, right. I mean, to, 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 you know, the various hospitals and doctors and what have you. So that's a, that's a devastating effect. And, and, and as you well know, the problem is is that people that, that you know, when funding gets cut, whether it be at federal or state level, they, they only know that the county did it. So 
So, I mean, it, you know, it, it's, it's the county that's yeah. not doing it. So it's and, and those levels never get restored. Absolutely. I mean, once, they, once they're cut, you, you never see them in, in a prior budget, even a couple years down the road, that they restored to 2010 levels, 2009, 2009, or something like that. Once they're cut, they're cut, and they never go back. Any other questions before we close the uh, trailer yeah, Thank you. Uh, on, Frank, on the area of uh, salaries at the uh, original social services, yes. it's an increase by $1.1 $1 .1 million. Is that all just salary increases, or those are the two positions you're talking about plus something else? It's, 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 it's salary increases based on contract, and it's two positions. Right now, you have to, you, those positions are budgeted. Well, you approve that. I'm just saying. Right, right. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So that's what that one for one minute dollars. Did the move to the other building uh, require additional uh, bodies? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yes. One of the uh, one of the positions. I hope I said this. I said the administrator, uh, the assistant administrator. The other one was was a nurse. Another nurse. We're hiring a nurse. If um, if you, if you, any of you had been in our Westminster Avenue building and saw the clinic, and saw how small it is or was, and how much it has grown in terms of use since we put it there, I believe now we're about 18 years into this. Um, and if you go to Parker Road, which I would encourage you to do at any point, because I was there today, uh, and saw the size of the clinic now, it is, um, it's probably about eight times bigger than it was. That was small. Oh, it was so small, but it, it's wonderful now. If you go in here today and you look, you go to Parker Road, you'll see how big it is, and the volume is there for us. I mean, we are handling the bulk of the immunizations for Elizabeth and um, the surrounding towns and other types of things. Remember, it's not just immunizations. You have nurse, you have one nurse right now. We're asking for another one, but they also do well physicals. And if there's a problem that's cited, you know, there's a referral to to a doctor. So, you know, kids that normally would not get medical treatment for various reasons get it as a result of coming in with their parents to apply for services. And one time we talked about possibly uh, partnering with other organizations that provide the service, like, for example, the Playful Health Center in Elizabeth, right. or also maybe Playful even, or even that same case, Reynolds. Well, one of, one of the, well, Reynolds, also, Reynolds does supervision for us, Angel, as I know you know, um, and has done for years. One of the things that we're looking at now, and where we are today, Trinitas has a clinic in Parker Road, and we've talked to Trinitas about maybe looking at that part of it. And then in Plainfield, which has been a pet peeve of mine since we opened up Park Madison, I wanted to, we wanted to have another clinic out there. Uh, unfortunately, we, uh, uh, we did not get the cooperation that I thought that we should from the Plainfield Health Center at the time when we had a lot of meetings to try to do that. Uh, we are now still talking again with Trinitas that has it out there to see if perhaps we can still do something there at Park Madison because we have the space um, that we can create a clinic for people, the same thing as we've done in, in Westminster and now in Park Madison. And that's something, if, if I mean, we'll be uh, doing very shortly. Frank and I will be meeting with Trinitas Hospital very shortly to try to move that along. I, I mean, I would just go to the top of my head, you know, you, you would think you'd be able to partner like with. Was the school board and the board of education. I mean, their funding, I think it went up $8 million this year in terms of, I mean, the, the money that they get is astronomical. Um, and I say that as, you know, obviously someone who lives here. Um, but the, these are all, you know, the immunizations and the various wellness things that are all prior to these students going into the school system. Mm -hmm. You think there'd be some way to tap into some of those funds to make some of that. And I mean, Elizabeth Plankfield on the other end, which is another rapid district, you know, that that has the, the you know, the early mm -hmm. kids are in school at three years old or, or whatever, you know, so, uh, you know, so, just a it, it really has become, you know, out of a grant that we received probably 18 years ago, the immunization piece is probably one of the three or four most important services I think that we provide as a county for these kids that but how much service that was in there originally? I, I, I remember that was done by the, the city itself. It was. And, and they fought it. If you recall, they fought us about doing it. Absolutely. I'm sure they're happy that we do it.
thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Any other questions before we wrap up? I want to thank everybody for keeping to the time. We'll be able to start on.